uh, and it's a very important intervention of any government, uh, but social protection alone is not enough. In order to aspire for holistic uh, po poverty alleviation, uh, it is critical to aim for sustained growth uh, and for governments to hone their ability to accrue the benefits of that growth equitably to populations. And such a transformation, we know from examples around the world, happens in an environment of good governance, uh, in an environment where government catalyzes investments, uh, in an environment of sound sectoral policies, and in an overall context when an honest redistributive hand of the government uh, is committed to accruing the benefits of that sustained growth equitably to populations. Our government is working on all those fronts. Uh, and I'm very uh, humbled uh, to tell you that our government was able to make uh, literally a V-shaped economic recovery even in the midst of COVID, uh, thanks to the success of, to, to the policies that, that were espoused. And we will continue to do that. Now, we recognize, as I just said, that for, for sustained poverty alleviation, economic growth is very important. And growth has these local drivers. So you look at different pockets of uh, potential with respect to agriculture, with respect to manufacturing and servicing services. And here is where tourism also has a very important, uh, important role. So I'm really very delighted that this unique area that the potential of this very unique area and its potential for poverty alleviation was squarely put on the agenda for this conference because I think that by the time this conference ends, we should have some actionable steps for the, for the, for the way forward. Before I come to uh, the actionable steps, I would just like to briefly dilate upon how our government looks at tourism, both as an engine of growth as well as a, as a driver of uh, poverty alleviation. Now, we are a, a very large country, we, and in terms of tourism, we have 1,000 kilometers of coastline. We have uh, the second highest peak in the world in terms of mountains. We have, we have deserts, we have plains, we have mangroves, forests. Uh, we have one of the largest five rivers in the world. So in terms of geographic diversity, there is a lot to offer to the world. We are also the cradle of three ancient civilizations. Uh, there are many sites for religious tourism. There is great cultural diversity that tourism could exploit uh, within this country, and not to speak of the legendary hospitality of, uh, particularly of our nation, particularly in the north. So our government recognizes that tourism uh, is, has huge potential. Uh, and our government recognizes that it, that it hits on multiple bottom lines. It is a means for growth, it is a means for job creation, it's a means for infrastructure development, tourism enables uh, inclusiveness within a society, it is also a means for empowering uh, women. And therefore, uh, the government formulated the 2020 to 2030 national tourism strategy. Uh, standards were set. Uh, in many parts of the country, uh, special institutional infrastructure was created to uh, promote tourism. Uh, a fund, a catalytic fund, was, in, uh, was, was also established. The national uh, tourism e-portal was, was, was opened. Uh, and to facilitate tourism, uh, our country had, has facilitated 190 countries of the world with e-visas. And 50 countries of the world can actually get uh, visas uh, on arrival as soon as they land within the country. So uh, we genuinely believe that tourism has huge potential uh, regionally. Uh, now, clearly, there are lots of challenges and opportunities when we talk about tourism uh, within a regional context, within the frame of reference uh, of ECO. Uh, our, our, many of our countries are landlocked, uh, and with respect to some countries, there is poor integration, there are there's security issues in some countries, uh, and many of us uh, really struggle because the institutional infrastructure for the vocational and skills training that is a requirement 
and a very essential ingredient for tourism. Uh, many of our countries do not have the appropriate institutional arrangement. So we recognize that as a region, we, we, we have many challenges. But as a region, we also have many opportunities because some of the countries in our region are very far advanced, have astute capacity to promote tourism. And I look at uh, colleagues from Turkey in this regard, uh, for whom tourism is a very important pillar of their economy, uh, and they've developed the sector very well. So our government believes that there is an opportunity in terms of cap capitalizing of sharing of experiences, in terms of pooling of resources, that it is very possible and desirable that we develop common standards, that we, uh, that, that we find how to join the dots between our inter-country infrastructure that will be facilitative for tourism, we could potentially pool resources to develop a regional center of excellence um, which can invest in building the right human resource competencies required to promote uh, tourism. And we could also, also potentially uh, ag you know, have a convergence on, on agreements to promote uh, tourism. So I think this, uh, this meeting provides us with an ideal opportunity both to formally and informally engage on in all these points. I think one of the ideal outcomes of this meeting is going to be uh, some level of agreement on the way forward. Uh, and I really hope that we are able to achieve this. Uh, I know from where I stand in the government that tourism is really a lifeline for, for many regions. Uh, in the COVID context, our, our country has uh, this tradition of regularly convening to look at progress on COVID-19, and our Prime Minister himself chairs meetings. And, uh, and one of our chief ministers consistently raises his hand at every COVID-19 coordination meeting uh, and asks how, when he can open uh, tourism, when his region can be open for tourism, because uh, their livelihoods entirely depend on tourism. And I'm sure that there may be many pockets within your countries where a similar situation uh, exists. Um, COVID-19 has hit tourism extremely hard. According to the reports of the WTTC, prior to COVID, 10.3% of the global GDP was contributed uh, by, um, uh, by tourism. And during the, the first, uh, subsequent to the first wave of COVID, it fell to 5.5%. Uh, 5 5 prior to COVID, one-tenth of all jobs uh, were, were, related to, uh, were, were related to tourism, and subsequent to uh, COVID, uh, the greatest number of layoffs have been in the hospitality and the tourism sector. So the sector has been hit very hard uh, because of COVID, but we also know that in the post-COVID recovery, in our efforts to build back better, tourism is going to play a very important role. Uh, of course, as countries, we are fully committed to doing all we can to use tourism as, a, as one of the pillars to prop up our economies. But we can do even better as we work together as a region. Uh, we can do a lot better if we agree to today at this conference what set of measures we are going to agree on and what are the ones that we will subsequently ensue so that we can work as a block, so that we can work as uh, one region uh, to, to promote this very promising sector which can fuel our growth in the post-COVID context to build better. So once again, I uh, want to wish you a very warm welcome to our country. I hope that you will take time out to, uh, to, to visit Islamabad as well. Uh, and I hope that this journey that we, uh, that we have begun today with respect to the use of tourism as a tool for poverty alleviation uh, is going to be a long and fruitful journey and that we are going to uh, agree on a number of next steps uh, which will allow us to make concrete uh, and meaningful action in this area. So thank you uh, for, uh, for listening to my opening remarks. Uh, we are now very keen to hear from all our delegates uh, so, and I think we are all seated in the alphabetical yes. order, so we would, I would like to uh, request uh, our colleague, the uh, Honorable um, uh, 
Shenkai Kohil from Afghanistan for her remarks.